each of my contents, uh, I would like to present this in two halves. The first half will be brushing up on the basics and the second half will focus on the recent diagnostic techniques, recent researches and debates that are going on. So to start with, tumor causes uh, infectious granulomatous disease as we all know. It affects the lungs but also affects the intestine, meninges, bones, joints, lymph glands, skin and other tissues of the body. It rarely affects the heart, skeletal muscle, pancreas and thyroid. So the etiology of tuberculosis is mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is a large-shaped, non-spore-forming acid fast bacteria. The acid fastness is due to the high mycolic acid content. There are three strains, human strain, bovine strain and the atypical strain. Uh, normally, tuberculosis is considered to be an opportunistic infection, but there, was a, there is a particular strain which is responsible which was, uh, which was discovered in the recent past and we have termed, termed it as opportunistic mycobacterium tuberculosis. Usually affects the immunocompromised patients with cancer, cachexia, HIV, etc. Coming to the pathogenesis, the infectious droplets which get airborne get inhaled, but surprisingly, only 10% of the bacteria reach the alveoli. Either the macrophage envelops it and forms a phagosome, then fuses with the lysosome to form a phagolysosome, and then the bacteria dies. The other way is the bacteria tries to control the macrophage. In that case, after two to three, two to four weeks later, the tissue response develops, which uh, results in specific immunity. And a large number of activated macrophage, macrophages at the site, and tubercles are formed. Uh, uh, thus, the name tuberculosis. The tubercles contain lambdan cells, plasma cells, epithelial cells, etc. Uh, and then cell-mediated immunity comes to play, and lymphocytes are released. The central part goes into initiation and it may calcify or cavity. So these are the two types of uh, the tuberculosis, primary and secondary. Uh, primary tuberculosis occurs in persons who are not uh, who are not sensitized to it before. Uh, it results in a cell-mediated hypersensitivity response. Basically, the uh, atrophic goes inside, it gets cell mental, it forms a granuloma. A granuloma is nothing but a wall of bacteria. The body tries to contain the bacteria and thus results in a granuloma. The granuloma uh, Later, the central part of the granuloma goes into necrosis, which is cheese-like, and we call, this, call it patient's necrosis. When uh, this, this tuberculous bacteria can also go into the higher lymph nodes, when both are involved, we call it as a gons complex, and, and it, may, it may go into a healed dormant lesion. The second, secondary tuberculosis can occur in two ways. The dormant lesion can get activated, or else a reinfection can, can occur, resulting in secondary tuberculosis. So these are the general symptoms of tuberculosis with severe prolonged cough, chest pain, night sweats, increased body temperature, decreased appetite, weakness or fatigue and weight loss. So these are the clinical features of primary tuberculosis, uh, which results usually, the symptoms show usually between 4 to 8 weeks. It is an influenza-like illness, uh, results in a primary complex as I said before, and the skin test conversion, the man which this can turn it from a negative, uh, negative test to a positive test in 4 to 8 weeks. And lipidinopathy, high level lipidinopathy, paratracheal media shedding, collapse, consolidation of the right middle lobe, obstructive emphysema, cavitation, pleural infusion, biliary tuberculosis, meningitis, pericarditis, etc. And the hypersensitivity symptoms such as erythema nodosum, lictinular conjunctivitis, and lactivitis. So you can see the histological feature. Uh, there is a central initiating necrosis surrounded by, uh, surrounded by lymphocytes, and there are also ventiloid histocytes. Histocytes but the macrophage in a tissue is called as a histocyte. And you can see an aggregate of epithelial cells with plum, elongated nuclei and abundant cytoplasm, which we call as a granuloma. So as, as, as dentist, oral manifestation of tuberculosis is very important. It can occur as a superficial ulcer. It can be an integrated soft tissue lesion, or sometimes it can be within the jaw, which we term as tuberculous osteomyelitis. It can be a painless intolerant, intolerant ulcer of the gyva, the involved neck nodes. Tongue lesions are usually painful. The problem with tuberculosis is it stimulates, uh, it simulates uh, traumatic, uh, simulates uh, like traumatic ulcer, after ulcer, and carcinomatous ulcer. So to, uh, we must get into, into the diagnosis either by inclusion, exclusion, and by a, a proper history. So coming to the diagnostic test, the basic background, basic diagnostic test starts with a microbiological examination with the zeal nielsen staining or a screw time examination which can be microbiological as well as a direct screen and 
the chest x-ray. Uh, fluorescent microscopy is trending nowadays. Uh, culture with global skin density media and biopsy of oral deviations can also be done. And we are we are also known about the non-specific tests such as the tumor print test or the hand tubes test. So till now we are seeing about the basics. Uh, these are the recent diagnostic methods which, which, which are used today. MGID, otherwise called as Mycobacterium growth incubated tube, was actually a device which was uh, found for testing the drug susceptibility to Mycobacterium. But nowadays it is used for our uh, diagnosis as well. RT-PCR, PCR-19 is here. Fast plate TB is a rapid, rapid diagnostic device which can be used for the diagnosis of tuber process. Uh, fast plate TB uh, uses fast amplification procedure. Uh, we have known about KBSA, which is an enzyme in immunose orbit assay. In TB, they are, they are using something called as Elis spot, which is enzyme in immuno, immuno spot, like immunose organ spot. And there is also another thing called as a MODS, where you have control wells and, uh, in, and inoculated wells. Uh, Gene Expert is a, is, a recent, uh, is a recent diagnostic technique which uses a cartridge based diagnostic system. Uh, which uses nucleic and acid amplification for diagnosis of tumor process. So these are the recent researches going on in tumor process. Uh, in India, in Punjab, there was a there was a teacher who found out CD two not nine receptor in a, in a particular ethnic race, and that receptor had an influence to invade invade the host, and it is understood as a study. And uh, second research is intake of vitamin D will increase cathelicidin toxin release from immune cells. Can confer tumor immunity, uh, TB immunity. And then multiple shots of PCG were given to type 1 diabetes patients, and surprisingly, that gave them COVID immunity. And newer tests like PSAT 6, early secondary antigen target, and culture filtrate protein are tests which are used for the, for the diagnosis of tumor process. So there is a trending debate now uh, why, should you, why should a dentist ask about the history of tumor process? A tumor process can modify functional scans and give us false positive. Uh, in USA, there was a case. Uh, the case came to a dentist with a complaint of an ulcer. Uh, the dentist gave, gave them a diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma of the tongue and he sent them, sent them to a pathologist. The pathologist also confirmed that it is a, it is a squamous cell carcinoma and referred him to a radiologist. The radiologist uh, had advanced scans, so he, he decided to take a PET scan. Uh, as we know, PET scan will test the high areas of metabolism or high areas of activity. When he was taking a PET scan, he noted multiple lesions all around his body and all, all, along his oral cavity. He thought that the cancer might have metastatic, metastatic, but there was no visible lesion outside. So he, he asked the pathologist to take a biopsy and then they realized that tuber process, the patient had tuber process and tuber process can influence PET scan as well and tuber process can even mimic the carcinoma in a PET so tuber process poses um, a modern day, it faces a threat to a modern day scan also. So history of tuber process is very important. So, so that's my summary. We have seen about the mycobacterium tuber process, the structure and the mycobacterium acid speciality, the types of primary and secondary and the symptoms, the initiation necrosis process, simple x-ray to advanced scans we have seen, the oral cavity being a middle of the body, and the newer diagnostic techniques which can be efficient and normal by the value of a property.